Welcome to the official dynamic hierarchical radio menu system. I know it's about full, but it, there's a reason for it. <laughs> now, first um, I'm going to show whenever I fire, I just fire one orb per tap. Um, by the way, this works with both a mouse and a controller. I already have it fully set up, so that is hopefully minimal scripting for you. Now, uh, first I'm going to show exactly the menu as is, and then I'm going to take apart one of the menus, completely delete it, and redo it from scratch, so that you can see how easy it is to get all of this going. So, uh, first I have to say that there are different types of menus. Now you can dynamically define the size of the hole in the, matter, in the middle. Uh, you can define the whether you have the outer indicator or the inner indicator, both, neither. And there's this nifty new little feature that I added since the last video I made for the work in progress. And it is, uh, I'm displaying it right here as a roulette system. So rather than pointing the left stick in the direction that I want to, um, to uh, sort of point at, I just choose, I just tap left or right, or on the mouse wheel, I could even use mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down, or even the left and right arrows on the keyboard. But you go one spot at a time, and the wheel spins as opposed to the uh, indicator. And as you see here, the, the colors of the letter reflects the, uh, each individual menu item, which is, you know, very nifty, I think. And um, I, didn't ha I did not actually have to define that twice. So I'll show you some of that later on. But for now, let's say I want to, I'm going to shoot some red. So that's simple, I'm shooting red orbs. Now let's go to the projectile shape. Here I can shoot other things, not just spheres. Now if you notice, uh, while I, I kept sort of the outer to, inter, to inner uh, shape of each of these objects. So where the top ones, the, uh, te the, the main text is on the outside. It, it actually took some work to get it so it's also on the outside for the bottom half. But it was well worth it. And it's dynamic, so you don't have to set anything manually. It just knows automatically. So pretty nice. So let's choose the cone. See, now I, choose, now I shoot red cones because that's what I've chosen. Now, firing mode. So this is why I called it the giant name that it has, because it's not just a uh, high menu system. Matter of fact, See, I can shoot. I can choose between a single shot, tri burst, or automatic. I'm going to go with uh, the uh, tri burst for right now. So, say tap once, and I only shoot three. And if I double tap while it's in the middle of shooting those three, it will only shoot three once. It will not fire off another three while it's in the middle of shooting the first three. So, that's pretty nice. Now let's see what else. Uh, projectile size. So I can choose the projectile size. And actually this will be the menu system that will be deleting and remaking. And you'll see why. Let's see. You can tell that they're much smaller now. As opposed to... See, they're significantly smaller. And if you make them too small... We well, can barely see them, <laughs> which is, it's comical, but anyways. So, as you can see, you can choose the color, and, you know, there's no hole for this one. For the, for the main menu, the hole is about 50%. Projectile shape, the hole is about 25%. Projectile size, the hole is also 50%. And the firing mode doesn't have a hole, because it doesn't have the, uh, the uh, menu system the way that, the, it doesn't have that, that the pie, so it's just uh, single categories and they're all individual. So yeah, it's pretty nifty, I think. Now, 
let's get to actually uh, disassembling one of the menu systems so you can see how easy it is to, to take it apart and to pick it back up. So first I will say that before I show off anything um, specifically that I am going to uh, oh here I'll just show you guys so what I'm going to be deleting will be the high menu size so I'm going to delete that now there is some work done inside of it oh. okay so I guess I better do this first so I have a you set the system default menu and it has all these options in the class defaults on the side all oh, tons and tons and tons of options for customization now because I am deleting a menu system first thing I'd have to do is this is a, a redirect menu system so I have to remove the redirect element from here the pi menu size I choose delete projectile size this is just the names of the menu delete and that's it compile save now when I play all I did was delete two items and already you can tell that the system has automatically adjusted it's I'm pretty proud of it <laughs> not gonna lie so everything else works about the same and you know it was minimum work I literally deleted two things and the item you can you can see it's gone it's no longer there so now I'm actually going to delete the item in question the pi menu size no asset references no memory references nothing now how it works is you have to make there is a main menu called master pi menu master you have to right click it and choose to create a child blueprint class and so this one I'm just going to call it just like the other one pi uh, projectile size so that's half the battle making that new item now let's open it now I will say there there are a couple things that I do have uh, in order to make this work one of them is a blueprint in the projectile where I have this tiny little bit amount of code where the projectile size I turn into a vector I pretty much I'm scaling it and then that's the new scale of it and in the first person character it's just a variable so the pi menu system defines things for you that's pretty much what it does so instead of you having to go in and define everything manually you just choose to define it yourself now this is the pi, uh, pi projectile size I'm gonna go to class defaults menu item menu names there's no elements in it Menu system parent this is an important one you want to set it so in case someone decides to uh, get go back to the previous menu which can be done with the uh, uh, I'm, I'm using an Xbox controller so I do so excuse me for it but I, I press the B button on the Xbox controller and it takes me back to the parent menu so you do have to set that if it's a, a parent item so uh, this is the menu default this is the parent parent so I'm going to set that as the parent and your names so this is what we're going to call the different new names. I'm just going to make it six items, maybe. That should be enough. Let's just do 50%, 75%, 100 25%, 125%, and 150%. So we don't need that last one. Now, as far as getting it ready, this is the first half of it. You do have to make your own variable. And in this case, you, have to, you, you always have to know what that variable will be. So I'm going to call this um, projectile sizes. I need it to be a float, and it has to be an array. 
It has to be an array the exact same size as the uh, actual uh, name, the, the, the exact same size as the array with the name. See? Now here it is. Check the sizes. So there's five elements here, so I have to put five elements here. So 50% is just 0.5. Then 5% is 0.75. 100% is 1.0. And then we have 1.25 and 1.5. Compile. I'll save. And now we, ha what we have to do is we have to, this is something you always have to do whenever you make a new menu system. Now for the redirecting ones, they're pretty simple to take care of, but for anything that's going to be a result of a redirect. So we can't make a redirect to the uh, project, uh, projectile size menu until the projectile size menu is ready. But for these executable menus, all you have to do is uh, look for the item inside the uh, uh, pie menu master. We're going to want to add the event. So this overrides the event of the, uh, the event inside the parent. The pie menu master is the parent. So from here, all we want to do is The first person character, he has the variable for projectile size. We connect the execution pin from one to the other. And then this set, the index is the number that we're returning. So when it comes to class defaults, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever number we're returning here is the number that we're getting from this one. Pretty simple. So we're going to make a An array get. Plug in the projectile sizes here. I'll spit this number back out there. That is it. Now, uh, the only thing we'll have to do is now go back to this Pi system default, where we only have three elements here and three elements here. Here, we set it so that we set the projectile size. And on here, we choose that particular item. And that is it. Now, when I hit play, see, the item is back inside there. And I'm going to change the colors here real quick. We choose a purple capsule. Uh, actually, I'll leave it on automatic. I like the automatic. So, now we choose the projectile size. Now see, you can tell that it's different. But, in this case, I'm pressing, I'm pressing A, and on, on the 50%, nothing's happening. I'll go back a couple times to exit the menu completely. It did change, but I did forget an element. And that element is that as soon as it's done this, We want to close the character menu. See, target is Pi Menu Master. And all we need, see, wrong one. All we need to know is this. What's the character? That's it. So one tiny little mistake, I forgot the, to close the character menu after you select it. But it's just that simple of a fix. I can go by default. I'm going to choose my purple. I'll go pyramid. I'll stay on automatic. So now when I choose my size, whatever size I choose, after I choose it, the menu closes. That's 50%. Let's do 100. Those are large, those are pretty large projectiles, but it's extremely easy. It's, yes, it's extremely easy. It's extremely dynamic. You yourself saw me 
build the system with just a few clicks. So, you if um, a menu doesn't have a parent, if you, if you accidentally forget to put the parent, it's no big deal. The only thing that'll happen is uh, when you choose to go back from this menu, it'll just uh, result in in uh, closing instead of going to the actual parent. So if you don't have a parent to find, that's the big. But anyways, yeah, that's the that's the entire showcase for the menu system because this entire system is made so that all the heavy lifting is done for you. All you've got to do is uh, integrate the individual item in the HUD with whatever it is that you're working with. And from there, you're set. So, all right. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, video sh showcasing the uh, completely dynamic and hierarchical radio menu system. So, I look forward to your reviews.